Welcome to another special roundtable edition of Samsung Business Television. Today we're talking about operational efficiency and wearables. We have a fantastic panel for you today, but to start out, we'll do introductions. Hi, John Gibson, responsible for manufacturing business development at Samsung B2B. Thank you very much, sir. And Julie? Hi, my name is Julie Godfrey. I lead financial services solutions and innovation and business development. And then Ian, sir, if you could please introduce yourself. Hi, Reed. Uh, Ian Hutchinson, uh, Samsung B2B Mobile, and I'm responsible for business development in the retail sector. Thank you again for joining me today. Um, Increasing operational efficiency using wearables, very big topic. We see a lot of uh, talk about this in manufacturing, retail, retail banking, finance. Why is it important? Why does anyone really care? What can you really do regarding operational efficiency? It's just a watch or is it something more? I think it's something more. Uh, it's really the ability to, to take efficiencies to the next level, to really know where the associates are in a particular enterprise environment. In the manufacturing space, as an example, they can be vast physical areas with relatively few people populating the floor these days. So to be able to reach out to them, contact them, and assign them the specific tasks that need to get accomplished at a particular moment in real time is very key. And then also getting feedback that that task was in fact completed. Okay, so it's so a communication tool, not just uh, not just a task management tool. Absolutely, it's two ways. Do you see that same thing in, in retail? I do. From a business flow point of view, you're solving the same problem, right? So it's a business efficiency. So whether you have a manufacturing shop floor of 200,000 square feet or a retail shop floor of 200,000 square feet or a major hotel or a major hospitality event or transportation area, whatever it happens to be, then uh, you're, you've got the same business problem. Um, how the how the apps render the device is different, right? So the engagement method for the employee to have the right kind of message and the right kind of sign off, those things will look different. But the back end infrastructure and the problem you're solving is the same for both. Okay. And then what about in finance? How is this how is this solving problems in finance? Yeah. So for our retail banks, um, many of them are managing resources. So um, any type of wearable technology or operational efficiency is about the different resources in your environment. So if those resources are human resources or money resources or other different ways, um, what the watch does is enable people to move around a space to improve customer service. So being able to be responsive to customer service as soon as someone walks into a branch, especially in our flagship locations, a retail flagship, uh, a retail banking flagship location can be Massive. So we want to be able to make sure that you have an investment advisor right there when you need them. So the wearable is not a replacement, right? It's an addition to, or we're actually increasing, we're increasing this operational efficiency. It's not one or the other. Uh -huh. That's correct. And to, to carry on with the hands-free operation, even though the manufacturing worker typically is not the same customer-facing activity, the efficiencies of what they're doing with having their hands free is critical to the, the performance. Because measurement of productivity, uh, how many widgets can I build in an hour, uh, as well as the quality of those widgets when they come off the assembly line are, are key metrics that are being measured. So even though it's not public facing, the efficiency aspect of, of the watch and the real-time communications and the hands-free element of it are absolutely critical to, to adding value to the operation. With all things mobile, security can never be an afterthought in that conversation. And so um, what are we seeing from a security perspective regarding our wearables in the field in coordination with our handheld devices, maybe tablets, something to that effect. In the retail banks, of course, retail banking is a place where security is paramount importance. Um, but the wearables that we're using today, live in branches, um, are using our Knox platform to secure those devices. Um, but the, a lot of the security comes around being able to lock the device down to just what you need on the device. So you're not running a lot of different applications, you're running just the core apps that get done, those operational efficiencies that you need. So let's talk about implementation, specifically in retail banking. What are some of the use examples that you can, you can cite for us? Well, in retail banking, uh, we have a great project going with HSBC right now where the employees of the branch all have on Samsung Galaxy watches. And what we're doing, there's a couple of use cases in, in, throughout the branch that are going on. The first one we call customer arrival. So a customer walks into the branch, they walk up to the person at the front, and they say, I am here today to, to learn about a home mortgage, right? So in this location, they're able to select on their watch um, the reason for the appointment, and then the person or type of person they would want, like a home mortgage specialist, to come in. 
and they send the notification and the employee is able to receive it. And that's very handy because the HSBC flagship location in New York is a three-story location. It's large, yeah. It's massive. And as John was saying about having a large uh, area to cover with employees. Um, so there's a few really great ROI points here. One is the customer's not standing around at the front of the uh, retail branch waiting on someone to come help them, right? The other piece of this is the communication that happens between the employees and the branch manager. So within the branch, the branch manager solves a very important role, uh, plays a very important role in the space. And he's not only the orchestrator of the space and helps with staffing, but he also communicates and approves a lot of different things. Now today within the pilot, he's able to send and receive communications uh, from him to the larger group and to subsets of groups to customer service reps or other people within the branch. And we've seen quite a fantastic ROI for these so far um, in, in the pilots. And before this, branch employees would have to come stand at the front and wait on, on customers to come in, or it may take too long for them to get there. Um, now with this new technology, they can go along their day, go along the tasks that they're doing, and when they receive that notification, then respond. Right, it's a more proactive response to operational efficiency. Exactly. Very cool. And then what's like, what are some of the examples for operational efficiency, uh, some use cases you can speak to in retail? I think the best advice we could give to anybody is to pilot it first. And then um, part of that pilot process is a discussion around what's the footstep of the customer, what's the footstep of the associate or the server um, or the hospitality agent. And then when you back that out, what's the business problem you're trying to solve? So if I was a quick serve restaurant and I was trying to solve for, has the table been served promptly? Have they been upsold on other potential things that are going on with specials? Have, has it been cleared? Those, those steps of service, when we put them on a, um, a wearable in the pilot with um, Buffalo uh, rings and wing, wings and rings, um, part of that process there was the ability to take those business steps that they wanted to compress and know they'd been done. Mm. Then a supervisor knows whether they need to take action or not. So if you take that world anxiety of like, did the table get done? It would be much better just to be able to see, yes, green light, red light, green light, red light. Um, if you take a um, slightly different example, something very basic, which is are the bathrooms clean at Cincinnati Airport? You, if you can do any kind of algorithm you like on the normal mean time between use and all the rest of it, but actually it just goes off real use. And then if the real use goes up, someone's a custodial services person is pinged, and then based on, again, a cascading system of who's nearest, they then go and they attend to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So if the business fear is, are my bathrooms clean and serviced regardless of or related to the number of people using them, something very simple like that, tap in, tap out, done. So I think if you're doing it from a business purpose, You've got to think about what is the thing I'm most anxious about that I need notification, clearance, acceptance, and then that the watch then becomes your way of knowing it was done. Ian's made a couple of really great points. One is when you digitize a process, you can measure it. Yes. And in, in a lot of these cases, we're taking uh, previously analog processes. In the case of the restroom, remember the piece of paper that hangs on yeah. the back of the wall that you sign off on? Or in the retail um, bank, we just didn't have data between when the customer arrives and, and when they're greeted. So there's these, these areas that um, either need light on them to have data or that were analog processes that were unmeasurable. That was, I think you actually coined the term data darkness. I hear data you say this a lot. Bringing light to data darkness. Yes, that's a big thing. You can't really improve operational efficiency. And when it's bringing it. light to data compliance, mm -hmm. then you want to know, and that's part of the, okay, I know, there's a digital record, it's in, it's out, it's auditable, um, and you can manage accordingly. The ability to take that same, eliminate the data darkness in the, in the manufacturing environment is key also, because quality metrics in particular can be tracked much more effectively electronically than they could on a potentially a piece of paper that could get lost somewhere. Sure, so what are some of the things that are happening in manufacturing? Well, one of the best examples we have today is, is a partner and customer called Magna, who's an automotive part maker that supplies a lot of parts to most major automobile uh, manufacturers in the world. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're fairly large. Um, they do have a lot of diversified different parts that they make, different diversified product assembly lines, therefore a lot to manage in the three core areas of manufacturing. So to be able to manage their uh, associates, they have, it's essentially task management, it's controlled from the cloud. Managers of specific areas can issue uh, requests for certain tasks to be done. Uh, it does cascade out, similar to what Ian described, cascade out to a broad, broad variety of associates that might be working in a particular work area. And then whoever accepts the task 
desk literally accepts it. The beauty of it is, is that it runs on the watches or the phones or the tablets, so it's seamless. It, it doesn't matter, it doesn't care what specific device uh, a particular worker is carrying. And then when that worker accepts it, they, they accept the task, it can then be tracked in the cloud, and then when it's finalized, they task out, if you will, and it's, and it's done. Okay. Uh, but the fact that it holistically fits into the environment and is seamless and device independent, really, uh, is one of the, the nice attributes about it that Mag Magna really appreciated. Really highlighting the uh, multi-device experience that we have. Absolutely, yep. So we have these pilots. What are, what's, the, what's the feedback? How, how do people receive this? Do they, they like it? Do they hate it? Well, I think in the Magna case, it's been very well received. There's a huge ROI already, just based on what they've learned from the recent pilots that they've done. What about the what about the actual physical adoption? People like them. Are they afraid of them? When you when you talk about something like a wearable in the abstract, everyone can start to I'm around a management table. Everyone can start to overly worry about the thing that it is, right? But it's all around change management. So, and that's what leadership teams are really good at is the management of change. It's one it's one of many more devices that start to make it so that there's a double click where there's a physical interaction. So now if you have any kind of retail um, process or manufacturing process or banking process in the physical world, now you've double clicked it so you can red, green, amber light it in your digital world, right? And it's all you're doing, it's just another endpoint with another interaction. And then um, the confidence should be for us to handle what that feels like as a human to use it. Um, and typically what happens is the, the concerns management have about others' reactions tend not to manifest themselves. So it, it, it but you, and each company is different culturally in their environment, whether it's unionized, non-unionized, there's things you have to go through, but the leadership teams know how to handle that. And um, what I'd normally say to them is it's just one more piece of technology in the layer uh, as opposed to being, oh, the wearable project. Hmm. I would say we approached it in retail banking as it being, oh, the wearable project. Oh, really? We did, <laughs> we did. Our approach is a little different. Um, so HSBC has a culture of innovation. Mm -hmm. They do, They and the employees at HSBC really enjoy um, being able to be the group that does innovation first. Mm -hmm. And so seeking out early adopters within your company who want to be the change leaders. And what we found within the in the branch location is that um, employees were driving to be the person that got to put on the watch. It was a point of pride for them to be the ones that were participating in the program and to look out to their global HSBC employees and be able to maybe brag a little and say, we were the ones that did this. So um, within banking, uh, being the branch or being the people who are driving innovation is a real badge of honor, not just at H HSBC, although they are a fantastic example, but across our other banks, we, we also find that if you uh, have a culture of innovation within your company, uh, one, and you invite your employees to participate rather than issuing them a device and saying, you wear this so we can track you, right? Don't do that. <laughs> we like, you know, um, have a culture a culture of innovation where people want to participate in the program, see it as a badge of honor, but also deliver value. Mm -hmm. So um, one thing we talked about. Employees want to wear the watch because that means if they're up on the second floor and a customer comes in that needs their help, they will be the first ones to receive that communication. So that's a leg up for those employees. If you're in a, especially in a, um, a customer service selling type environment, you want to be the one who receives that notification first. Absolutely. What gets you guys excited for the future when it comes to like, operational efficiency and wearables? exciting part to me is the explosion of data that we're going to have over the next few years as 5G ramps up, as the other endpoint devices ramp up, as sensors ramp up, um, because the wearable device is a delivery device for data. It's a delivery device for alerts and delivery for algorithms uh, and actionable information. And as the algorithms get better on the back end, the data sets get better on the back end, the actionable insights will get better and better. I think for me, it's the, um, it's the whole idea that you could have an infinitely flexible and perfectly balanced retail machine for consumers that will be personalized. So my needs will be met, but actually they may be anticipated before they're met, and then they'll meet me wherever I am. If I'm on the corner of a street or a department store in my home, then how I want to engage, who I want to engage with, where my products and services ship to, 
all of that can be done because then you've got a multi-device environment, you've got a data infrastructure, and then you've got some very smart people that are able to do some data science on that and figure out how do we best serve consumer number one. And consumer number two is different, and then consumer number 200 million is different. So I think you'll end up with um, potentially only five or six people meeting the same criteria worldwide out of your 200 million customers, but you may end up with like super micro segmentation. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's the thing of beauty because then you'll just get perfectly what you want, when you want it, how you want it at the right price. So if you think about uh, Industry 4.0 and you think about the connectivity of all the different machines communicating with one-on-one -on -one through IIoT, mm -hmm. Julie's point about the data delivery device inside a manufacturing environment where all that data is being relevantly presented to, to the user at the moment. So in other words, if a machine is failing, if particular uh, metrics are showing that it's at risk for shutting down an assembly line, as an example, you want that alert hitting all the watches as quickly as possible in the environment because that's, that's cataclysmic for uh, today's automated environment sure. for, to have that happen. So preventative maintenance and, and extending the preventative maintenance use case to a more automated one, uh, including the wearables, is absolutely key. So that whole ecosystem for me is what gets me excited in the morning about how this technology uh, is, is a critical part of, of Industry 4.0 going forward. John made a really good point uh, there about as our environments become more automated, and I think each of us are facing automation in our yeah. industry in some way or another, that the wearable device is a human-centric device. And one of the positives about a wearable in these future environments is enabling human-to-machine communication. And uh, that's a big positive for future looking too. And it's much less invasive. Socially, there's a big deal about taking your phone out because now I've unlocked from you and I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. With the wearable, you're able to do it in a way that people would not even know that you've, you've been communicating. So it allows you, if you're in any kind of customer engagement, to hold the eye and, and make people look, feel that you're listening and have their full attention, but still take care of a whole bunch of processes. It's much less invasive than bringing a phone out. Not that it replaces the phone, but it's just, again, based on use case. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and talking about operational efficiency using wearables. Thank you so much for checking this video out. For more information, go to samsung.com business.